All right, here's example two, or groove number two, and I really like this one. Let me play it for you, and I think you'll see why, or hear why. Uh, I think it has a real nice sound, real nice gentle sound, but it has an, a lot of nice motion going on. Let's talk about what's going on. First of all, the chord is just C in first inversion, okay? C triad in first inversion. So it's, uh, so it, I'm going to count out the beats for you. One, two, E, and, a, uh, three, E, and, a, uh, four. You can hold out that C if you want that, that last C in the left hand, so it sounds like this. Or you can play the C short. Okay. You can also, when you start, hit the two C's together or just the single C. simple, just quarter notes. So my point is, in going to the E flat and the F, is you see how if I, well check it out, I'm going to play it for you. It's kind of boring, right, to just do that. But now if I do this, I add some motion on that C chord. When I go to the E flat, it actually sounds nice. You just kind of like, you know, just kind of have it just be quarter notes. So uh, the point is that you can go from having an active chord, I would consider this being active, you know, you're moving those notes around in the chord, you're arpeggiating notes, you're putting in these filler notes, these ghost notes, right? whatever terminology you want to use. There's a lot of activity going on in that measure. So move from that active measure, that activity, to something that's less active. Right? It's going to be okay because what will happen is the ear will be like, oh, thanks for giving me that opportunity to just kind of rest my ear for a second and not hear all of that clutter. Right? I mean, I know it's not clutter, but you know, to the general population, their ear might hear it as a lot of stuff going on. So it might be like, oh, that, that sound is cluttered. Okay, well, that's fine. It's cluttered. I can accept that. But now I resolve it and I just play something nice and just straight quarter notes, right? So uh, I can do this, you know, move to a different key. I'll go to F. moving between different chords. I went from an F to an E flat, back to an F, then C, B flat, you know. Um, so you can just, you know, have fun moving between chords and trying to apply some of these different rhythms. Now that's the thing. That's what's going on here, is that I'm applying different rhythms to these notes of the chord. Of course, like I've said before, that's not the only thing, right? That's kind of the main thing, is I, I change around the rhythm so I'm not just playing just straight chord notes. I do some different rhythms. Da 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 da
notes, different rhythms. Okay, fine. I have the notes of the chord. I apply different rhythms. Yes, but now the next part is that I'm um, having this cooperation of the hands, right? So I break it up. Some notes are in the right hand. Some notes are in the left hand. Obviously, I'm looking for that outside note. I'm looking for that, you know, uh, uh, left hand to be hitting that bass note for me. So I have the bass motion going on. Okay, fine. After that, I'm also changing around dynamics. So I'm not just doing... Playing some softer, some louder, you know, louder. So you hear the that first chord is a little bit heavier, heavier, soft, a little bit more of an accent on that last chord. So it's it's kind of like and then I have these inner notes going on. And then also notice that last, that C up there. That one I hit a little bit harder as well. You know, what if I want to hit all the C's in there a little bit harder? All right, that changes the feel of it as well. So I can try and isolate different notes. Um, should also try going between the two grooves. So go from number one, let me play that one again. I've just stayed on a C chord. That's it. I've done a C chord for like, I don't know, like six, eight measures there. So when you have this chord that, you know, it just goes on for like, I don't know, four measures or whatnot, a lot of times, you know, students are always asking me, what do I do when I have that chord? Well, in this particular style, there you go. That's what you do. You start to break up these notes of the chord, right, and start to do some of these ghost notes or, or inner fill notes, right? And then what you do is to make it so that it sounds interesting, you mess around with the dynamics. You make it, like I've said before, that, those ghost notes, not too heavy, not too loud, right? Make them so they're a little bit softer than the rest, and you can accent other notes. All right, so anyway, have fun with that. We're going to start talking about the 16th note and how we can uh, incorporate our own grooves and create our own grooves. So I'll see you in the next chapter.